I spent a long time terrified of what my wife calls the fraud police. The people who will show up at your door and let you know that you are actually a complete fake. Um, I think probably the point that I knew that I was a writer in that I thought I was a writer and the world thought I was a writer and it was just too late to try and go and get a real job was probably the point where the Graveyard book won the Newbery Medal, um, by which point I'd been a professional writer for about a quarter of a century. I do my best work when I'm bored. Any situation in which I am stuck, bored, cannot get out, and go into my head and just start daydreaming and building is a wonderful place to begin anything. The important thing is just having a, a notebook, having something that I can write in at all times and just keep working. And I always have one of these on me and I'm always writing. If somebody came down and said you can only be a novelist or you can only write screenplays or you can only write short stories or you can only write horror, you can only write fairy tales, you can only write realistic fiction, if, if one of those things came down it would feel like some kind of horrible death sentence, it would feel like a job. Um, the thing that makes me happiest is it never feels like a job, I just write, I have a wonderful time and the next thing is always different to whatever the last thing was. I get very embarrassed when people ask me, so what, it is, what is it that you do? And uh, I'll say, well, I'm a writer. Write a little. And they'll say, so, uh, what kind of things? Do you write uh, fiction, non-fiction, books, TV? plays, picture books, comics, and I go, yeah, all of that. And they go, well, what kind of stuff? Uh, I mean, are we talking realism? Are we talking fantasy, science fiction, horror, romance, humor? And I go, yeah. And at that point, they think I'm mad or weird, and they stop talking to me. It's great. I would, I would best like to be shelved in one of those strange places at the back of a bookstore covered with dust where the odd books that they don't actually know where to put on the shelves go. The kind of book that gets only ever gets discovered by somebody who needs it at the perfect time. When I was writing American Gods, I was very familiar with almost all the mythology I needed, but not all. Um, the stuff that I couldn't find and was buying books on just to find fragments was stuff on Slavic mythology. And so I was finding whatever I could and putting it into the book. And then, much to my surprise, have noticed that stuff that I made up because I couldn't find it has now crept back into textbooks 15 years later and can be found on Wikipedia and stuff. And I look at it and I go, well, technically I made it up, but then it's mythology. Technically, somebody made everything up, so I don't mind. If I could wave a magic wand and have everyone read just one book, I think I would, first of all, have waved my magic wand and created the book that although the cover is the same and perhaps even the title is the same, for each person it would be the book they need the most. It would be the book that would tell them what they need, the escape that they need, the place they need to go, the, the people they need to meet, the wisdom that they need or the reassurance that they need. And I think that's going to be different for every single person. So I would magically create that book first and then I'd let people read it. What is next is a really good question. Right now I'm working on a BBC TV series and I have to get that done. 
after that, it will be a novel. I think I know what novel it is, and I think I know what it's going to be called, and I even think I know what's going to happen in it. But I've been surprised before. And every now and then, I've written books I wasn't expecting to write, or started books that I thought were going to be the next thing, and they didn't really feel right, so I'd put them on one side and I'd start something else. So we'll wait and see. <laughs>